London, known as one of the most diverse city in the world. Although we are all different, we share one thing, living in the same city. I'm going to be uncovering how our ancestral origin contributes to the shaping of our identities, especially living in London. Hi, I'm Maya and I'm currently living in London, but I'm from Chicago. Maya moved here last September to study at UCL. What are the cultural differences between living in Chicago and here? Um, aside from like, like the basic things, like just like different vocabulary between like the two countries and stuff. Um, there's not too much actually. I, I do find them somewhat similar. Just, I don't know. Just, I think people are like friendlier here sometimes. Just like in Chicago, everyone's in a bit of a rush to just get to the next thing constantly. So. I like just like being able to like stop and like yeah people just seem nicer here um I like it um I feel like there's a very strong like sense of not community because there's so many different communities there but there's like a sense of like Chicago and pride about being from there which I quite enjoy um, people get very intense about specific things whether it's like just defending our pizza or well I will defend the bears you know we're not the best <laughs> like by far not a great team um, and then when celebrating when we do have great successes in sports um, so yeah I like that and then it's like a cool combination of like just different cultures and stuff like I've got to be surrounded by so many different cultures from them for a long time so that's been nice where do your parents originate from and tell me about it um so my mom's from Mangalore, which is um in S south india and it has a very it's a very catholic area in india and so it has it's a very strong culture of its own very distinct food um for example um well a lot of india um is like mostly vegetarian or won't eat pork uh, one of my absolute favorite dishes from this area is called Sorbethel, which is almost entirely a pork curry and had it for Christmas every year when I was growing up. Amazing. Um, but then she ended up, um, she was born and grew up in Karachi, Pakistan, so that also has its own cultural influence. She grew up like learning Urdu in school, um, stuff like that. And then my dad's from northern India. Well, he was born in um, Delhi, Punjab but he grew up um, in Canada, he moved there years too. And so that has its own culture. Um, I grew up going there like almost every year, uh, visiting my, my whole family's there. Um, definitely more similar to what I grew up with just being from the States. But yeah, it's cool just like having all these different places. The room there, but the blinds are closed. There we go, my blinds are closed because I had the wonderful realization a couple months ago that if you, um, it's late at night and some people are annoying and they want to just send me pictures of myself, <laughs> one person in particular. So yeah, I have multiple pictures that were just airdropped to me of just like me sitting on my computer or whatever. So oh. the blinds are permanently closed now. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's definitely been cool in London because being from the States, there's not as much like Indian and like South Asian culture in there. And so just being able to like meet people and realize that they have a lot more similar cultural background to me. Because from the States, when you think of Asian, you just hear, think East Asian. Um, so yeah, just being able to like share that experience with a lot more people here has been really cool. A lot of my extended family lives in Arizona where there's like a lot of places to hike and stuff. So probably one Christmas we went hiking and the entire hike I could not stop talking about Sorbet though. Like just the entire time I just like going up to my dad like, so when is the time for us to eat Sorbet though? What is the time for us? Like it was Christmas, like I could have been worried about the gifts or the like all of that, like the other Christmas stuff. Nope. I, d I just ate the Sorbet though. So that was it. <laughs>
of friends we quite often go to Westfield not to buy anything because like pretty much all of us are working class. Shepherd's Bush is a pretty working class area. We kind of just go here to hang out, like at the back of Westfield because um, all of our houses are pretty small. Well, some of them aren't even in care, so we can't have each other around that. Our houses a lot and because of COVID. So yeah, we usually just hang out here. Meet 18 year old Kitty an aspiring artist who shares her story about being both Jamaican and Jewish in London. I don't really like Westfield myself. It's, I think it's really like gentrified, it's kind of gentrified the area itself. But the outside bit, you can see Grenfell Tower and a lot of like the estates. And it kind of like brings you back to like actual Shepherd's Bush, actual West London. I think that's kind of like why we like chilling around there, especially because also there's no security. So we could do whatever we want, you know, play music, we're gonna go up the escalators, yeah. But yeah, I've been coming here since I was younger. You know, it's kind of like the hot spot for everyone to hang out is Westfield. So my dad's Jamaican. He was, he's grown up in Jamaica, he was born there. He actually, lived on the street when he was younger because his mom left him in Jamaica and he kind of had to raise himself he was sleeping on the street he didn't really know in Jamaica they speak patois which is like a dialect and so when he came to England people wouldn't really understand what he was saying purely based on the fact that you know his mom had left him in Jamaica and moved to England and my mom is Jamaican and Portuguese Jewish which is really interesting so I didn't find that out until I was nine years of age and when I found that out, I instantly wanted to know more about it. And the story is quite interesting, actually. Um, it was because of my great great grandmother. Um, her family was enslaved at the time. Well, not enslaved, but you know, like kept as like house helpers, servants, whatever you call them. And one of the people who lived there, who she was, you know, working, who, who owned her. Um, he had fallen in love with her and then he was Jewish so my family has adopted the Jewish religion ever since then, Orthodox Jewish. And Orthodox Jewish is actually um, always comes from the mother's side of the family. Yeah. Being Jewish or discovering that you were Jewish shaped who you are today? Yes and no. Um, I don't really practice the Jewish faith myself, like Orthodox Jewish is really, really like bosh 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 I would not be able to look the way I do if I was practicing and one a lot of orthodox Jewish people do not like black people even though there is a lot of black people who are Jewish um I, I would say it it shapes my diversity and how I view myself in a way because when people ask me where I'm from I tell them oh yeah my dad is Jamaican and my mom's Jamaican and she's Portuguese Jewish and they always want to know more about that and it kind of, you know, changes the way how I feel about other people's ethnicities and not like... So when people, when you hear someone say they're from somewhere and because you've never heard it, you, you don't go, oh, I've never seen like a, a white person who's from um, like Kenya. I don't like you. It, it kind of makes me more open-minded, you know, not judge people. Yeah. From hearing Maya and Kitty's story, it is not just ancestral origin that shapes who we are, but also where we live. No matter where we are from, we all have different or share similar ancestral origins. Yet, by living and working with people from a range of different cultures, diversity allows us to be more interconnected and aware of many parts of the world.